Well, guys, I think you can tell already it's going to be an unusual video. So let's take a look at a knife real quick. My Archbishop by Ferrum Forged Knife Works. And that's probably the majority of the knife stuff we're going to have in this video. This is not a knife video. This We're going to look at all the stuff that Dahlstrong sent me. They sent me a bunch of stones, which is what I'm really interested in because you guys know me. I'm a sharpener at heart. So we're going to crack into these. We're going to take a look at these stones. We're going to give them a once over. I'm going to show you how to prep brand new stones and a bunch of different stuff. So let's go ahead and get all this out of the way after you guys look at the logo. This is a little closer to our average viewing angle. Now, I have not opened these. I don't know what's in these. So we're going to do that first and foremost. I do know that this is a 400 and 1000, and this is a set that on the other side of it is marked as a 1000, 6000. So they basically sent me their full line of stones all the way up to 6000, but I have a duplicate. So uh, we'll take a look at that. But let's go ahead and unbox these and take a look. Now, I'll, like I said, all I did was peel the plastic off. These came to me from Dahlstrom. How do you... There we go. So let's see what's in here. Um, nice. Uh, so we have a, one of these is a 400 and one of these is a 1,000. These are big stones too. 400 and 1,000. That's 1,000. Uh, you know what? I don't understand, but typically 1,000 grit stones are, are usually uh, orange. And that's a 400. So let's pull these out and let's get this box out of the way. And let's see what's in the other box because it's bigger. It looks like it came with some other stuff. So inside this box, Jesus, this is heavy. Okay, I'm looking at it. This isn't just stones. There's some other stuff in it too. I didn't, I just noticed that. So let's see what's in here. Holy crap, this is a big box. Hang on a second, guys. I got to turn this around. All right, so now we got this in a position where it's not going to hit the camera. Let's open this up. And we've got two sharpening stones and then... I'm not 100% sure what these are, uh, but we have a base. Oh, okay. That's what made it so big. This is a big base. Uh, so wooden base with a rubber lining. Let's get that off to the side. Let's pull these stones out. Is this a thousand? That's a thousand. I think we'll leave that one in. We don't need three stones out at any given time. I don't need two 1,000 grit stones. And this is a 6,000. So these stones are still brand new. And then I got to figure out what these two here are. I imagine one of these is a Nagura stone. But I don't know what the other one is. And I got to figure out which is which. So uh, let's get this out of the way. Set the stones out and take a look at them. And then we'll get into starting to unpin them up and prep them. So we got all three of our stones out. There's a 1,000, a 600. I'm sorry. There's a 400, a 1,000, and a 6,000. And I did find out what these are. The smaller one is a rust eraser. So basically, if your knives get rusty, um, you can use this to clean it up. I don't think we're going to use this. I don't get rust on my knives very often. I usually take pretty good care of my stuff. But I have that in my... I have that little feather in my cap. And then this is the Nagura stone. So we need to get these stones in to soak and then we'll unbox this and start seeing it. So a couple of things we wanna look at as far as stones, like how fast do they soak? How, uh, how, how, how well do they hold the moisture and things like that? And uh, but we're gonna get into soak, but I am gonna do a couple things to these that is vitally important if you are a sharpener. So let's go ahead and get these out of their packing and into some water. And so the 600, this basin is not quite big enough. I was going to do all three stones. We probably still can, but you, you want your stones to have as much space. So we're going to see how long it takes these to uh, stop bubbling and absorb water. We see how well they hold their moisture. We'll put it in a stand and then maybe do a little sharpening on one of the knives that they sent me. But we have to do a couple things. So give me a second. We'll run this. You guys can watch the bubble. So we're going to take a look while those stones soak. I'm timing it. Uh, while those stones soak, we're going to take a look at the knives they sent me because Dahlstrong, here's the big announcement. Dahlstrong has decided they want to start sponsoring some of my videos. This is not a sponsored video. So therefore, I'm going to give, as always, all the stones and everything an honest review. But while we were waiting on the thing to do the stones because I was supposed to shoot with a much bigger channel over at Al, um, Al, uh, what is it? Uh, v uh, Eat More Vegans Carnivore Barbecue. Well, we had to cancel that shoot. One of his team members got sick and caught COVID, so we had to cancel it. But since I tell you guys all the time, I will not take a sponsor unless I'm comfortable with their stuff. The reason I agreed is I've had these knives as an affiliate for a while now. Um, 
So they sent me two knives. This is the Ronin series. Uh, this is a Honesuki, which is a Japanese style poultry knife. And they sent me one of their Gladiator series chef's knives. So we're gonna take a look at those and I can tell you these are really great knives. So let me get this stuff out of the way and take a look at these. And I think I mentioned that this, this mat that's here is not our typical mat, but what we're gonna do is a very messy process of prepping stones. So um, this is their Gladiator series eight inch chef's knife with green handles. This thing is an extremely good knife. It came ridiculous sharp. Uh, I may sharpen this one to just to give it a finer edge, but this thing came screaming, screaming sharp. And uh, my wife's been using it. I used it a couple times. Really well balanced for a kitchen knife. Um, nice, nice size. And the fact that it doesn't fit my butcher block and it comes with this little sleeve and a very nice box means that I can just put this in the box in the drawer where we keep some of the other stuff. And so the other knife they sent me, sorry about street noise, but I want to use natural lighting today. They sent me this Ronin series, Honesuke, Hone, Honesuke uh, kitchen knife, which is a Japanese style kitchen knife. As you can see, I've already sharpened it. This thing is ridiculous ridiculous sharp. This one is in Aus 10 and this one is in 4116 German steel. Both of them have performed incredibly well. I've used it a lot. This one is really comfortable. So these are the knives they sent me. So you can expect to see some of this stuff on the channel. And like I've always said, there's an affiliate link down below that has a link to this where you can save 10%. So I think those stones are just about done. So let's go ahead and prep the stones. All right, guys, first thing I wanna check is how well these things hold their moisture because they've been in for just under 13 minutes. I, I think it's closer to 13 and a half because I didn't get the timer started. So let's pull out this 400 grit stone. And what I wanna look for is how well are these stones holding their moisture? Are they drying up or is the surface drying up and things like that? And that'll tell me about how long. Typically my more, the stones that I had used, I had to soak them for quite a while to get them. So we're gonna see how well they hold their moisture on the surface. It seems like they're pretty well saturated because typically you would see it dissipate a lot faster. So you can see there's still a lot of moisture sitting in that stone. So, um, as with every time, I will have a bottle of water to add to it. But what we're doing now is we're going to prep our stones. So we'll start with this 400 uh, real time, and then I will do a um, time lapse of the other two stones. So one of the things you want to do first thing when you get a stone is you want to definitely make sure it's flat. And that's why we're using this because we're going to make a mess. So you're going to look at your stone and I want to pick which side of it I want to use. I would like to save the doll strong logo. So what I want to look for is which side of the stone is smoother. This side is very good. This side, you can still see saw cuts and stuff on it. So as long as there's no big inclusions or anything like that, I think this will be the side of the stone I'm gonna go with because it's just gonna save me some time. So the first thing I do with every stone when I get it, I pick which side of the stone I'm gonna use. Um, and then I take a lapping stone and I immediately knock the corners off. for two specific reasons. One, it's gonna prevent the stone from chipping when I hit it with the corner of a knife and it's not near as abrasively sharp or aggressively sharp when you run into it with your knuckles. So it's gonna prevent the chipping and stuff that you would see on your stones typically. These are aggressive stones. They are actually eating into that. I should have mentioned I would use the back. That's what I'm gonna do. So I can tell already, these stones are definitely, definitely hard. So that's a good thing. That means they're gonna cut aggressively. So give me a second and we'll prep for the next step. Now, the next step you could use your um, flattening stone to do 
but since these are pretty new stones, I'm pretty sure they're going to be really flat. So I'm just going to go ahead and use the Nagura stone that they sent with because you can also do that for flattening. So what do you have to do? Well, you got to validate your stone is flat. So we're going to give ourselves, there's two reasons you do this as well. One, you want to make sure your stone is completely flat. And two, you want to open it up because when they come, the pores could have been filled with any number of packing material, dust, and things like that. And by opening this stone up, it's going to cut better. You're going to want to do this a couple times throughout the use of the stone during each session. So, simple as that, we just take our Nagura stone. And we just work our way around this stone until we've removed our entire checker pattern. And it might seem wasteful, but there's two things that this does. It starts to build the slurry that you want in a water stone. And it verifies our stone is good and flat. So, give me a second. So, got rid of all that scratch, well, the majority of it. So, I'm really confident these stones are nice and flat. And now that I've got this out, um, I want to... Uh, I want to get the other stones done and I want to sharpen a knife. So, we'll probably sharpen that chef's knife that I have not sharpened yet. Uh, and see how these stones perform because I love the way these things feel so far. They feel like they're going to last a long time. They're very hard. This is a this is a really hard stone, and for it to have cut into this, I now have to purchase a new one for knocking those corners off. That this is silica carbide, so it ate that stone up. So these are some really aggressive, very hard stones, which is something I do like. It's something I've been looking for for a while. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll just do the initial edge set on this of that chef's knife. So let me get everything ready and I'll bring you guys back. Now, typically I sharpen with the stone in my hand. We're gonna do it this way today, which you still can, I can still do it this way. I just wanna see how these stones are cutting. Oh yeah. So yeah, these stones are cutting really well. I'm not seeing a big slurry buildup, but what I'm also not seeing are the deep cuts that a lot of times knives leave in the stones when you do that. So, um, See, I, I can sharpen. I can sharpen the same way that other people do. When people ridicule the way I sharpen, I can still do this. Yeah. These cut aggressively. These are really... See that thump right there when I cut into... That's exactly why you knock the corners off your stones. I want you guys to try and acknowledge how awkward this is because I currently have a tripod in between my hands. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, typically, I would use a much more aggressive stone. I would start on a 400, but I will say that this one is doing the job really well. I typically would start with a much more aggressive stone, but the fact is you don't have to. You can get it done with a 400. Especially kitchen knives are a lot thinner um, and their edge profile is going to allow you to to take care of it. Sorry guys, <laughs> didn't mean to hit tripod. They're gonna allow you to um, to do that because of the, the, the material you have to remove is not anywhere near what it would be on like an EDC pocket knife. On an EDC pocket knife, you gotta remove a lot of material. You're talking about really thick, really thick grind, things like that. This is not the case on these. These are nice thin kitchen knives um, that are ground really well. I need to get a little bit of water on here. 
So when you're using water stones, you don't ever want to wash them off. So that slurry you're building, you want that. Gonna go ahead and time lapse you guys. So I brought you back for the last couple passes because this is important. What we're gonna do is we're gonna deburr. And we're gonna find our burr and we're just gonna do a couple passes. Edge trailing. To deburr. Just light passes. You can go this way as well. I typically like to do a an edge trailing, like a stropping stroke because it has a tendency to not hit it pulls the, the abrasive along the, the blade like this, and it's much less likely to add little microchips and things that you're not gonna discover till later. I don't know why that moves so easily. So I'm probably gonna time-lapse finishing up the next couple stones now that we've actually set the edge. I removed all of the old edge and set a new complete edge um, at the 400 grit. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna run through the other stones and get this edge. I'm not gonna, I, I was thinking about prepping these stones, but after looking at them, these stones are super flat on all sides. So the only thing I really need to do is knock the corners off of these. And then I can just go to town on these because this one was really super flat and it the other ones seem to be the same. So I think that's probably what I'm gonna do. So I'll prep this stone real quick and just build a slurry on it and then um, get right into the actual sharpening. As with every other knife I've ever sharpened, it's time to do the final step. So I have a couple ways to make sure we've removed all of the burr. One of them is you run your knife through a piece of wood. This is the wood handle of my strop. And then always, always, always hit your knife on your strop. This one needs reloaded. Let's use the other side of it. Um, just to make sure you've knocked off any little pieces of burr. So let's go grab a piece of newspaper and give it an edge test coming off these new stones. So these pieces of phone book paper here, as you can see, it glides effortlessly. Man, that is a sharp knife. Effortlessly through. Now, what you're feeling for is the reason I do it on a piece of paper like this, on a fine piece of paper, is you're gonna feel any catches that you may have missed, any areas you may have missed. So we'll look at some more sharpening with these stones. I'll do a full on sharpening tutorial with these stones for the paying members. But this video will probably also go up on Amazon. These are, s guys, I would not bring you a product if I had not tested it and tried it. That's why we're doing the stones. And the fact is, Dahlstrong is going to start sponsoring some of my videos. I would not have even approached them if I had not already tried some of their products. And now that I have some of their knives and stuff here, I can honestly say they are really, really good products. Um, the sharpening stone, all the stones are great. The only thing I will tell you I noticed is be a little careful with your higher grit stones. The 6000 is a little bit softer. There's some scratches or some deeper cuts in this stone than the other stones, which are to be, which is to be expected. You can always kind of clean them up with this and flatten it back out. But as long as you're not doing straight razors and stuff like that, shouldn't be an issue. So yeah. These are really nice stones. I like these. And the fact it doesn't take them as long as other stones to uh, to soak um, is a benefit, especially if you can do a lot of knives like me as a professional sharpener. So, guys, that's it. Let's turn this around, do some final thoughts, send you out about your Just day. Just real quick. I, you know, I say that it makes a hell of a mess to do water stones and sharpening on water stones. And people are like, why? I was like, you have got to clean all this up. Um, the stones have to be cleaned and put away. You've got to prep them for next time. You got to clean all your stones up and make sure that you're not leaving any metal on them and stuff like that. So it is a messy, messy, messy prospect. So, yep, there you go. Now, 
we'll send you out about your day. And I realized I said something. I said that I approached Dahlstrung. I want to make sure this is clear. I didn't approach Dahlstrung. Uh, my friend Al over at Eat More Vegans got it set up. So they offered me, uh, they offered me to, to become one of their ambassadors. I didn't, I did not approach them. I'm sorry. I misspoke when I said it. There you go, guys. Uh, the first use on those stones, I am very impressed. Those stones are, I have to say, they're better than some of my more expensive stones. I've used a lot of stones. Professional sharpener, I've used a lot of stones. I've been disappointed by a lot. Uh, these cut aggressively. They cut consistently. They're nice and hard, and they're huge. You have a huge working area, on, uh, especially if you're doing larger knives. So pretty impressed. Stand by, look out for, like I said, this was not a sponsored video. This was just me validating what I already knew about their products. Already had knives in, already had handled some of their knives. I was really excited about having them as affiliate when they announced they were willing to let me do sponsored videos. I was, I was like, you know what? It's fine. But I definitely wanted to test the stones well, because I'm a sharpener. Guys, that's it on this one. If you like the videos, give them a thumbs up. If you don't like them, give them a thumbs down. But please try to tell me why. I can't change the content if you don't tell me what you don't like. If you want to support the channel, it's as simple as like, share, subscribe, drop a comment, hit the bell icon. If you do hit the bell icon, make sure you get notifications turned on your device. And, and if you do hit the bell icon, also make sure that it's set to all so you don't miss any of the content. Um, if you want to support the channel financially, there's a lot of ways you can do it. There's a whole bunch of them that don't cost you anything extra, and that's the affiliate links. And like I mentioned, the Dahlstrung affiliate link that I have actually saves you 10% overall on your order. Um, other affiliate links down below work every bit as well. Um, just make sure that if you're using the Amazon ones, just keep in, keep in mind, you can shop for whatever you're looking for. You don't have to lock it down to just the item you're clicking on. Other ways you can do it. I have got a membership that is tier based. Everyone saves $5 off my sharpening service. Everyone has access to my, sh uh, to my gilded server. Baseline and premium tier members are automatically entered into a giveaway that I do on the gilded server. And the premium guys have access to a sharpening tutorial series available only to them here on YouTube. And the final is I do have a merchandise store. It's on Ember Shirt Co. Yet another coupon code that can save you 10% at checkout. Crazy Sharp. All one word, capital C, capital S, Crazy Sharp. Saves you 10% anywhere on Ember Shirt Co. Not just my merchandise, other creators as well. So guys, that's it. I love you all. Keep it clean in the comments section. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. And I will see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.